productivity as a software developer is, um, is, is a very, very important thing. It is actually key. So as a team, we thought it wise to put up a session that will help you improve your productivity as a software developer. So next on our lineup will be a lightning talk from an outstanding lady on how to improve your productivity as a software developer. Like I said, um, this session will be championed by Lona Maria. She is the technology and information advocate at UNICEF. And she's also um, a content creator and a data analyst. So without taking so much of your time, I'm going to invite Lona to take over. Okay, thank you so much, Sam. Uh, let me just share my screen. Okay, I think. Just a sec. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Um, hi, everyone. It's so amazing to be back here. Um, thank you so much for that introduction, Sam. Um, I just do like a quick re-intro. I'm Lona Maria and I work at UNICEF, but I also do create content outside that that is focused on helping you know, developers be able to kind of understand the underlying things like your productivity, how you sleep, do you sleep well, such small things that could really tweak our daily life. And yeah, so I'm going to be talking about productivity. I kind of wanted to title my talk Productive Tea because I feel like everyone drinks tea. Yeah, and it's really an all-round guide. It's more technical. It has a bit of non-technical things. So it, it's just a little bit of everything. And to start off, I just wanted to define what productivity could be. I think if anyone has questions, feel free to, I don't know, forward them. If there is a way I can see those, I'll be grateful. But um, to define productivity, it's essentially to talk about someone setting goals, accomplishing certain actions and registering progress on something. But there is one part of productivity that we don't tend to get and that is balancing other life aspects. I feel like everyone concentrates on this, but we kind of forget that balancing other life aspects is very, very important when it comes to productivity. So what does productivity look like? I feel like of all these three people, each and every one of these is productive in their own way. This person reading a book, this person on their computer most probably doing something, this person just singing their heart out. They're all productive in their own ways and there is no one size fits all when it comes to productivity. As long as you are accomplishing something, it's, it should be able to really you know, it, it should be able to count as productivity. So there is no one size fits all. It could be on some days, it could be this. On other days, it could be this. On other days, it could be this. And this is not even different people. This could be one person. So um, some myths about productivity, especially in the software developer community is um, lots of people talk, talk about working late nights or really early mornings or very long hours. Um, the truth is, as a learner in this space, yeah, things are a bit hard, but it doesn't necessitate that you sacrifice, I don't know, your sleep over some of these things. And the other thing we forget is our brain is actually really does function more on sleep. So the longer you sleep, the more rested you are the better your brain function. Um, the other myth is the 10x developer phenomenon. I don't know if we've heard of this, but 
it's something about, oh, a 10x developer should really sacrifice everything around them to just focus on this thing in front of them, which is their computer, which I kind of think is not true entirely. There's some things about that whole phenomenon that just don't really take in account the fact that a developer is a human being, they need some human interaction, they need some basics around them. And the other myth is always around resting. Um, not very many people believe that resting is a form of productivity. Everyone thinks if you have a hobby, you should turn it into a job. If you have a side project, you should host it, start making money from it. But the truth is sometimes it's just to help you relax and make you feel better and just be able to polish your skills, but not entirely make money out of it. But I mean, if you can make the money, just you know, go ahead. Um, yeah, so one thing I always do recommend when I talk to people about productivity is productivity is personal. Just like how you choose to take up this course, just how you choose, I don't know, Android development over web development, that in itself, the choices we make about our productivity are really personal. So you have the ability to actually do design your own productivity focused on yourself and just something that works for you as a person. Um, this is the part where I say I never share my routines because I feel like uh, that would make people think I'm trying to, you know, follow this. It's going to work for you. It's also me saying I've iterated through so many things and this is what I think works for me. Um, there are four principles though that I think everyone designing their own productivity should always look out for. Um, the first one is systems over goals. Um, it is very, very advisable that you should enjoy the journey, not the destination because most often you spend longer time on the journey than you spend at the destination. Um, you, sometimes you travel eight hours to just go and spend, I don't know, two hours on the mountaintop and come back down. So it's rather more sustainable to enjoy the journey. So you might not even realize you're reaching the destination. You're still having a good time. So just like that, if you design your productivity, I would recommend you always look at what is the process, not what is the end result, because that's what kind of defines the end result. The other thing I always think about is, are you building habits? Um, productivity should be sustainable because um, there is so much in this world we are living in that you know someone is defined by their productivity. Um, society will reward more those who work certain number of hours or those who work in a certain way which is work smart and all that stuff so I always do recommend that if you're going to find a productivity system it should just be something sustainable something you can do over the years because the truth is you'll most probably be working until you know you're, you're maybe like 50 or 60 so you want something that works for you so that you can still enjoy your life and still you know, have that long-term focus on the things you want to achieve. The other one, I, the other principle is managing your energy, not your time. Um, so many, you hear so many people, um, I'm a morning person, I'm not an evening person, but uh, morning is, I think for me, morning is relative. I don't know if I wake up at midday, my morning hours could be in the afternoon. So it's more like you should manage your energy and how you feel so that when you're really in the high spirits and you're ready to take on work, then go ahead and assign that to the much harder tasks. And then if it is, if it is not, if it's like a low energy period, just go out and do other things around your house. Um, I think that really does help. Then um, the other one is to define your own metrics. Just like how I said, um, productivity is personal, success is personal, um, what I would consider successful, some other person might not consider that successful. So all these things are really, really, you know, personal depending on, sorry, um, depending on 
what you're focusing on, depending on where you want to go, depending on what you see for yourself. So everything is personal. So just do what you feel like. Um, I thought I would include some tools. Now, this is where like productivity gets technical um, in terms of you as a software developer, as a data analyst, as you know, anything that you are at this moment, these are some tools that you should know that could help you improve your productivity. First of all, a good code editor. We have so many code editors and everyone prefers one over the other. But I suggest that you choose a code editor that really, that you feel comfortable with, but also inside that code editor, you always have a theme. Choose a theme that speaks to you, that makes you want to look at your code, that really, you know, brings joy. Um, a Pomodoro timer, it's, this is more of a technique that, you know, you work in cycles, 30 minutes and 10 minutes break or 40 minutes and, you know, 10 minutes break. Um, there's so many different Pomodoro timer techniques, but, you know, go ahead and use any that you feel like. And it's okay, you can time yourself 40 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on how you understand your attention span. Um, and not taking an organization up, these are very important because if you have so many different tasks you're handling, you want to be able to, you, you want to be able to know what you're doing and you want to be able to organize yourself in a way that will just keep you on track. I always do recommend Notion and it's something that has worked for me. However, there's so many others that are out there. Um, I work tracking up, those are popular, especially for people who do freelancing jobs. You want to know how many hours you've spent on a certain task how many lines of code you've written on this particular task and all that. Um, there's so many of these that can track like how much code you've written and give you the right metrics to maybe submit to your employee or sorry to your employer and you know just be able to get paid for that. So it's very important to invest in that. But even as a learner, it's something that can help you know how you know how you're evolving personally. Yeah, and just a, one that I really tell everyone, um, take care of yourself. Um, that is a very, very big part of productivity. The truth is this body you're pushing to try and achieve things. If it's not, you know, well rested, if it's not taken care of, it's not going to help you achieve those other things. Um, these are just a few things that I feel developers always don't look at. Get your eyes checked. Even when you have no defect, there is always something because there is an effect on using your computer almost every day. Um, you can get the UV filtering glasses. I, I don't know if it's <laughs> this exactly, but like the glasses I'm putting on right now, those are really helpful if you look at your computer for long hours. And then always do keep a great posture, stand up, stretch, sit upright. It is very easy to just like sulk on your desk and just be in that position you feel is good for you, especially now that we are working from home. Um, invest in a good computer setup. It's very easy to be like, oh, I work at my house, in my bed, on my couch, um, on my dining table, like me right now. But it's very also important to invest in a good place, in a good setup, a good desk, a good chair, that just create an environment of work around you. Um, exercise, sitting for long hours, you might want to put in some extra steps after work. Um, eat healthy, drink water. You know, if you go hours without eating, that can be detrimental to your health. And please do rest, 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 rest just not like the API, but really do take a rest. Yeah, um, yeah. so that's it. Um, I'll, if you really want to know more about this, I have a whole YouTube channel where I explore these topics. I talk about all these things, or you can just email me with your question um, or is really ready to answer, or you can just follow me on Twitter. It's just Lona Maria K. And 
I've explored really topics around this from you just sleeping to you defining your productivity goals and trying to keep them and all that stuff. And I hope this is useful for everyone watching this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Lona. I, I must say I love the simplicity of your presentation. And <laughs> thank one, you. thing, one thing that you said that caught my interest is the fact that uh, finding a balance between your career and life itself is something that you have not really been taking very serious. And I've also heard people saying that software developers don't have a life. I don't know how true that is. So can you like tell us, is it true that software developers don't actually have a life? I, I don't think that's true because trust me, if you follow me on Instagram, I have a life. <laughs> <laughs> a very good one outside of this whole thing. Yeah, I don't think it's true, but I think it's one of those stereotypes. And I also know when I was just getting into this space, I was like, oh, we don't have to do this. We don't have to do that. But the truth is at the core of it all, we are human beings. And even when we're just human beings who know how to manipulate computers, we still are human and we just crave that human interaction go out with your friends and do all this stuff. So I think it's just a stereotype, but it's not true entirely. Okay, so uh, on a final note, I, I believe as a lady, it might be difficult for you to actually balance between your career and life that you said. So I don't know, can you like tell us how do you cope? How do you manage to do that successfully? Um, I, I think it's very, it's, it's not even only exclusive, you know, to me or other people who are like me in this industry. I think it's very important for you to know your goals, define your goals and stick to them. Um, I would say it's also very important to have friends in the industry, talk to them or even watch them from far away and see how they progress on the things they do. And, you know, pick a leaf from that and, just be able to determine your own course from that. I know sometimes I feel like, oh, this is so hard, but I also want to have like my own life. But I don't think that has deterred anyone. Like, I just feel like this is a job, like any other day job, I would wake up and go to the office and come back home. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for having joined us today for this session. Thank you. Okay, guys, you have all heard it from Lona. If you have any question or you need some, come, you have anything you want to contact her for, you can always reach her on Twitter. She has also shared her mail. You can email her for any question that you may have.